God can make a way for us when it seems like everything is closed, everything's blocked. We don't see a way forward. Uh, maybe we can't see it, but things can open up. And God can intervene and God can open things up and create an opportunity for us to move ahead, even when it doesn't look like that's possible. A number of years ago, I was in Haiti for a convention at the church in Kajak, and I was there for the, uh, the week. <clears throat> and uh, Rene Clugston came out with his family and some people from Santo at the end of the week and were there for the weekend. And uh, the mission had given me a vehicle to drive out there. So I had a vehicle, uh, vehicle out there and then Rene came out with another vehicle. So we were gonna go back into the city and I was flying out the next morning to go home. Um, and uh, Renee had to take some people to Lock Lynn. And so after the church service was over and lunch had been served. And so it was a little later than I would have liked when we started heading for the city. And uh, Renee was in the vehicle in front of me and uh, I was following him. And I had some Haitian people with me that I was taking, giving a ride into the city. And, Rene had air conditioning in his vehicle, so he had his windows up. We didn't have air conditioning in our vehicle, so we had our windows down. Um, and it was uh, it was rah rah season. It was leading up to Easter weekend, up to Mardi Gras, and uh, so there were, was a, a lot of uh, a lot of rah rah groups that would be uh, across the road dancing and chanting and singing and and uh, basically the best approach to them was just the way just leave them um, until they and they would let you through well it started getting dark before we got back to the city which I didn't really like that much but we get into the town of Leogan and there the streets were just blocked and we couldn't we couldn't move, uh, and it didn't. I, there was only there's only one road. There was only one road at that time through Leogan, so we had uh, to go through that road. And uh, we were just sitting there, and people were coming by the vehicle, and they're saying, "Oh, oh two vehicles full of white people." Oh, and. Um, and people got to talking and and then somebody came up to the vehicle and and uh they're saying you're not going to get through here till morning you won't be able to go until the sun comes up in the morning and and the people that were with me they were really worried they were saying this is really bad like last year there were people who their vehicles were destroyed and burned and they were robbed and and we're in a dangerous situation. We really need to pray. And so we were praying and, and uh, somebody came up to the vehicle and he started talking to me about where were you and where are we going? And I was saying, well, you know, I was out in the country and was at a church for some meetings there. And, and uh, he was saying, oh, you know, we have a church here. And he was saying, you know, could you give me some money for our church? And I said, you know what? I don't have any money. Like when I go out there, I have friends out there and I give all my money to those people, I don't have any money left. Um, he was like, oh, okay. And he walked away. After he walked away, the people that were with me were saying, we don't know if what you told him was true or not, but that was a really good answer because if they knew we were here and we had money, <laughs> the word would spread and we would be robbed and we could even be killed. And this is a very serious situation. We had communication radios between the two vehicles. And so I radioed Renee and was saying, you know, this doesn't look good and he's like no no we'll just uh, we'll just wait and, and um but he didn't seem as worried as i was but maybe he was i don't know but he didn't sound very worried uh, but he had his windows up so people weren't talking to him and um so people in my vehicle we were praying up a storm and and uh, and were really worried well all of a sudden traffic started to move and I just stayed like less than a vehicle length behind Renee and he was less than a vehicle length behind the vehicle in front of him so people couldn't step in between the vehicles and we just started moving. 
we went forward a little bit and then we turned left and went down a side street and I got on the radio and said to Rene, do you know where we're going? He was saying, I don't know. I think it's the blind leading the blind. But as long as people are, as long as we're moving, let's just keep going. So we just kept following and the vehicles went down, boom, bumping down these side streets, dirt streets and turn right. And we went bouncing along some more and, and uh, made a number of turns in there. And But we kept moving and nobody could step in front of us because we're moving. And eventually we came back out on the main road on the east side of Leogon and we're able to get into Port-au-Prince. Oh, what a relief. And, um, you know, I, we were in a very dangerous situation and uh, it could have been really bad. At the right time, God opened up a way and we were able to get through and we were able to get home and be safe.